Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. All right, so this is the Immortal. This is my new purchase from Cold Steel. If you guys don't know, I am a Cold Steel junkie. I really do like their stuff. Um, back in the 80s and 90s, they had some cheaper products, but now they're really introducing their blade steel or they're improving it. Okay, so this is one of those knives that I was kind of on the fence about because I'm not really sure about this knife, this tip. Uh, ideally this knife is probably used mostly for martial purposes it's not made for woodscraft that kind of thing uh, yes you can open boxes with it cuts cut rope and plastic and all that other stuff I'm just not going to show you on this channel about that uh, you can there's plenty of videos out there you can check out uh, Lynn Thompson's cold steel web page for more information if you like that being said, you guys know that I am a custom knife maker, 3riverblades.com. Go up there, check it out. I do not make folders, so I don't have a problem showing you guys some of the folders in my collection. Hence the Immortal. I actually like the name pretty good. Uh, but the um, the reason I got this was it was kind of a funky thing. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of this blade uh, shape, uh, but I'll give you a little bit more information on it. Uh, this is typically what a Roman legionnaire would use. Uh, this is also what gladiators used to use. So they would call this a gladius. Uh, the sword was called a gladius and it was basically straight or pointed on both ends and came to an acute point. It was great for stabbing uh, and hacking, not so much slashing, but most people in that era used... Uh, shields and spears was the weapon of the day and this was essentially the backup weapon so close in fighting you would take a gladius and you would hack and slash but again it was mostly used as a backup weapon um that being said let's go over some of the specs here this is uh the immortal by cold steel it is a four inch blade it is uh made of carpenter stx xhp alloy the weight is 5.9 ounces and the blade thickness is 3.5 millimeter and has a five inch handle of G10. Uh, excellent construction materials. Like I said, Cold Steel definitely has upped their ante when it comes to the steel. A lot of their stuff used to be made by uh, China or Taiwan and, and it was like OS8 steel. And you know, I have some OS8 steel blades. They're not that bad. Uh, they sharpen really easy, but they also dull very easy. So this is supposed to be a decent steel. The swedge on this is not sharpened, so you don't have to worry about that being a double-edged uh, knife. This only has a tanto edge. This is hollow grind up until this point, and then it is flat grind on both edges. Uh, triad lock, G10 grippiness with the scallops. This is, I think, I, I think this is the only one that I've seen. It does not have any liners in it. The G10 itself is sufficient. The lock itself is a little bit stiff, but most triad locks are. You can open it one-handed, or you can use the wave function. Uh, all cold steel knives will be tip up. So if you carry it in your right-handed pocket, I'm right-handed, so you carry it there, and then when you put it in your pocket, it will catch this and deploy as long as you pull on it hard enough. Now I have had other knives where this deployment did get stuck inside of my pocket and it almost half opened, all right, didn't deploy all the way, so you gotta practice with that, okay? Um, the clip is removable, so you can use it from right hand pocket to left hand pocket if you want to. On the back, it does have some type of uh, I wouldn't say skull crusher, but you know, it's like a, if you wanted to do pommel strikes, you could, all right? And it does have a lanyard hole in there. So if you wanted to use your beads, jewelry or whatever, I know a lot of people use lanyards to identify their knives. That's fine, I don't have a problem with it. But ideally what you're looking at is a martial blade, okay? This blade itself, like I said, was a backup weapon sword. Now, in my own opinion, I think that a five inch handle and a four inch blade is a little bit offset. I would prefer a four inch handle with a five inch blade or maybe a six inch blade. So uh, Colt Steel, if you're listening, and I know you're probably not, please make an XL on this. I will definitely buy an XL. Uh, I do like the handle curvature, so it has an inter, uh, integral guard. If you are want to hold it like a Crusader, you can. 
and then of course on the reverse grip it stops your fingers from sliding forward big fan of that uh, I don't know if you necessarily need these scallops but it does give it a little bit more traction if you like it now a lot of people like to compare this knife and I'll, we'll get into competitive options let me just move this up here for a second a lot of people like to compare this knife oh by the way if I didn't mention you're looking at a uh, hundred dollars to a hundred and ten uh, retail all right not MSRP so it's really not that expensive for a hundred dollar knife now a lot of people like to compare it with this knife this is the SR SR1 folding blade this is a beast this is one of those tank knives if you are someone that's lost in the woods you probably want something like this this to me is a little bit more utilitarian a little bit more useful uh, the specs on this is a uh, four inch blade same blade length overall is nine three eights uh, the steel is CPM s30 VN so you're upgrading the steel again weight is seven ounces g10 handles and the blade thickness is 4.8 millimeters so this is kind of a tank and I'll do a review on this one as well but a lot of people like to compare these two and for me it's a different genre uh, this knife is more of a survival knife where this is more of a backup knife okay so and you're also paying this is 140 versus like 108 another another competitive option in my opinion and probably for a cheaper price uh, is the AK-47. I'm a big fan of the AK-47. It uh, the hand the knife. This is another thing with cold steel uh, on this knife where they have a smaller blade and a larger handle. I have extra large hands or wear an extra large glove, so it doesn't matter to me. Um, it does look a little bit different, and I'll get into aesthetics in a minute. But this is an OS 8 steel. They don't make this one anymore. They either make it in a carpenter steel or the S35V. So therefore you're going to pay a little bit more. This is like $98, $97. Whereas the Immortal, again, is running around $100. Uh, the clip here is reversible if you like it. And a lot of people like the AK-47 for its cost. Triad lock, wave feature, grippy, grippy G10. So excellent blade overall this does not have any liners again this is more comparable to the immortal so I would definitely look at that uh, again and we'll talk about blade profiles in a second okay let me just fix this up for you uh, another one that I'm a big fan of uh, is the recon one recon one also is about 90 something dollars you're looking at 92 93 dollars depending on where you get it Again, the old recons used to be made in OS 8. Now this one is made out of S35VN. This is the Tanto Point. I do have other um, versions of this. And I think if you're looking for an overall utility blade, um, you probably won't go wrong with a recon, any of them. If you've got the clip, the spear, or the Tanto Point. Again, triad lock, that kind of thing. And of course, speaking of genres, the Spartan okay this is uh, the Spartan uh, and I think it's it's kind of comparative to the immortal because Spartan blade was mostly used in Sparta whereas the um, the immortal was mostly used by Roman soldiers so you know different almost yeah, different time periods I would say uh, but again both martial blades uh, what's good about this one is that it does have a lot of handle uh, comfortability it is a recurve so uh, this is mostly made for slashing where this one is mostly made for stabbing okay it just depends on this blade style that you like this is very 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 popular uh, and if you don't have one of these I would definitely get one on the website right now on Amazon they're selling for sixty dollars sixty dollars for this blade so I don't understand why you don't have one again uh, it probably will come with a second pocket clip so if you wanted to uh, switch from left to right you can but awesome blade overall I know a lot of people use this as a backup weapon as well and you can't go wrong for 60 bucks so let's talk a little bit about blade profiles you can see there's a bunch of different profiles here now um, one of those things that it's kind of it's it's kind of a stupid conversation but I think it's important to realize is that when you go to a barbecue or you're in the office Carrying what appears to be a double-edged knife might raise some eyebrows, whereas if you pulled out something with a single edge, 
it's probably not such a big deal. Again, it all depends on your state and your state laws. What I do like about this is that it, and what I like about cold steel is that there is no guessing. You basically know what you get when you buy the knife. If you go to this knife um, in a woods environment, people think you're kind of weird because that's not necessarily made for the woods. It's uh, it's probably not the best steel. I, I would assume this is Aus 8. Um, and it's not typically made for that, okay? But if you went into the woods and you carried something like the SR1, now you understand, you know, okay, good steel, it's very thick, it's very hefty, it's probably gonna last you a while. So as far as blade profiles, uh, to each his own, I don't wanna tell you not to purchase it, but you either love it or you hate it, or maybe you have uh, some issues that might be legally binding, I don't know. In any case, I highly recommend it. I would definitely buy any of the knives on this page. I'm sorry, on this uh, platform right here. Um, I'm a big fan of cold steel knives. I'm gonna put all the links down below. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, guys. If you wanna support the channel, I'll put the links down there. Go to 3riverblades.com, check out all the knives, fixed blade knives that I have up there. And uh, as always, guys, be safe. Talk to you soon.